So with eight seconds to go, it's 113 to 98. And it's hats off to the New York Knickerbocker defense. And now four seconds. Three, two, one. We have a new NBA champion. Twenty-four long years. And I know that Mr. Ned Irish, who started college doubleheaders to get the basketball interest going in New York in the mid-30s, then started the Knickerbockers, and he and Irving Mitchell fell, Alvin Cooperman, and all of them here, they must be delighted. and will return for a complete wrap-up of this NBA championship game in just a moment. Well, he gets to enjoy the final 18 seconds on the bench. We have the reserves out for the Milwaukee Bucks. Lots of them. McLemore, he gets two. So for Baltimore, it's Trez Vant, George Johnson, Gary Zeller, Fred Carter and Dory Murray. Five seconds to go. Zeller. Zeller on the rebound. 119 to 106. And the Milwaukee Bucks are the champions. 118 to 106. And let's go into the Milwaukee dressing room. And here is Jack Toyman. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. I'm in the Bowl Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, I'm so excited myself. These guys are going crazy in here. Wes Pavillon, the chairman of the board of the Milwaukee Bucks, Ray Patterson, the president. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you, Jack. Thanks, Jack. And Walter Kennedy, the commissioner of the NBA. Walter, uh, it was a great championship. Well, of course, Milwaukee has had a tremendous team all season. And I think it's only fitting under the circumstances that they should finish one of the greatest seasons any NBA team has ever had in winning the national cha uh, NBA championship. There's a big off. Oscar, congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Jack. Big, big win for you. What do you feel? Is this better than the days that you've seen? Oh, this is great. Great, Jack. Finally, finally got it, finally got it. This is 11 years in coming, right? A long time, Jack. How do you feel? Oh, I feel wonderful. Huh? Huh? Great, great victory. Had a great game, team game. What about this team, Oscar? Is this a great ball club? I think we're coming, Jack. Uh, first year I'm with the club. I think we're going to lose and have to get much better. Great guy. Big fella. Hey, Luke. Big fella. <laughs> Lou, congratulations. Oscar just paid you a great compliment. You had a great series. Congratulations. He was a big help. <laughs> he was a big help. Listen, Oscar played a hell of a game. Today. How about yourself? You played a great game. Congratulations on the MVP. Thank you very much. How about the way Oscar put this ball club together? Don't you think that the addition of Robertson at the last year put a great ball club together? Well, in this last game, like, uh, you know, we weren't, we weren't all together today. You know, we were missing some of our offensive plays. He just came right in, made the big play, got the rebound, put the ball in the hoop, made three-point plays. He did everything. Well, you had a great series. Oscar, this ball club uh, has just about everything, doesn't it? Well, you know, we, we hope to get there, Jack. Uh, we're still improving. We're a young club, of course, except for myself and Boozer. But, you know, we hope to be much better next season. Oscar, you had a great series. I know you want to go over to your bench. Oh, Thank yes, you. Congratulations. Thank you. Lou, congratulations. Thank you very much. Very much. Now, Jimmy Clemens rebound. We'll count it off. Five, four, eight, two. Oops, stop on four. And they run it out. And the Los Angeles Lakers have won their first NBA title ever. Now, they put Phil Jackson to play defense. I expected the Knickerbockers would call timeout when, uh, when they get the ball so they can put a defensive team in there. Goodrich lost the ball. Goodrich lost the ball. Willis Reed picked it up, and now the Knicks have it with only 40 seconds to play, and they lead by five, and what a big play that was. What a big turnover that was. McMillan against Monroe. 30 seconds to play in a ball game. 10 seconds on the timer. Knicks running the clock. Earl Monroe, bucket here, it's over. Chamberlain blocked it. Goldtending. 
attending crowd on Chamberlain and the New York Knicks have won this basketball game and they have won the NBA championship. Bill Jackson has the rebound, 13 seconds to play and a foul called in backcourt. And we have the new champion for the NBA. Knicks won it first in 1970. And they've come back now to win it in 1973. They lost last year to the Los Angeles Lakers. Four games to one. Won the first one, the Lakers won four in a row. The Lakers won the first one this year, and now New York is going to come back to win four in a row. Jackson makes the free throw. The final score is academic. Take a look here at one of the big plays in the ball game. Knicks have 100 points as Jackson makes both free throws. The ball just got away. Actually, Monroe knocked the ball loose from Goodrich. Frazier picks it up down court, gives to Earl, and it's tipped in by Jackson. Three seconds to play. They give it down court to Chamberlain. He drops it in. One second to play. One. Knicks are hugging each other and having some fun, but they inbound it. The clock goes, and the game is over, and New York has won the ball game. The locker room? I don't know how to get there. <laughs> He's on his way to the locker room. That's where he's going. We'll be right back. <laughs> the New York Knicks headed for the quiet of their locker room, having won the NBA championship. Four games to one, 102-93, beating the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, New York tonight is the only the second team in NBA history to win the championship on a foreign court. The Boston Celtics did it here in 1969 when they beat the Lakers in a seventh game. And now New York has won it in the fifth game, 102 to 93. Los Angeles won the opening game here, 115 to 112. New York came back to win the second game here, 99-95. Then it was 87-83, New York, in New York. 103-98 in New York for the Knicks. And tonight here in Los Angeles at the Forum in Inglewood, New York wins it all, 102 to 93. Great performance by the Boston Celtics, and you can't give enough credit to all members of that team as Williams, Fritz Williams, fired. He is fouled by Art, Art Williams this time. There's not a heck of a lot of room on the basketball court. All of the press people, there he went out on the floor in that one corner. They're playing like about There's one. your Milwaukee story right there. That's Larry Costello. He's just shaking his head in disbelief. Very frustrating, I'm sure. The Boston pressure is what did it right from the beginning. Here's Hankinson. He gives to Steve Kaberski. Jump shot from the side by Kaberski is knocked up and out of bounds. Yes, the Boston defense uh, caused the turnovers by the Bucks, and that way really was the ultimate downfall for them. And this is they really missed Lucius Allen in this series. Yeah, it was the Boston bench. Dick Garrett, two seconds, one second. He's all over. Final score. The Boston Celtics are the champions of the NBA for the 12th time. Tom Heisen. The Boston Celtics have defeated the Milwaukee Bucks in seven games as Heinsohn and Costello have their meeting at the end of the game. The Boston locker room. Hot Rod Hundley will be in there along with Rick Barry. Right, so one second, second remaining. Casey Jones telling his players to pressure the man who's going to throw it inbounds. Maybe we'll get a five-second turnover. They'll go for the ball. Kozelko is on beer. Mullins is out here. What a story this has been. Underdogs all the way. The Warriors have done it. The Golden State Warriors have just won the NBA championship. They have beaten the Washington Bullets in an incredible four straight. The final game, 96 to 95. No surprise, Sport Magazine has just named Rick Barry the most valuable player in the series, but that was only one man in that first game. I said, I don't believe what's happening when they came back. Well, I'll tell you, I believe now. These it has been a splendid series. Alvin Adams out. Here's Sobers with 10. Charlie Scott steps in. He stepped on that midcourt line. I'm not sure anybody picked it up. 
But he didn't go over it, Brent. You must go back over that mid-court line for it to be a backcourt violation. Rick, they're going to sell this floor. This will be the last basketball game ever played on it. $10 a square foot, and I understand they'll take in about, oh, $60,000, and a new floor will cost them $40,000. So for $10 a square foot, you can have a little piece of history here in Phoenix. I'm glad they're doing it, too, because this floor is really bad. It's got a lot of dead spots in it. <laughs> It's 87 to 80. Last six seconds of an NBA championship. It is all over. It has come to an end, and the Boston Celtics have won their 13th NBA championship. Hondo John Havlicek with possession of the ball, and the players are meeting here at midcourt congratulating each other. It has been that kind of a battle here. Collins and Don Nelson. Charlie Scott going off. Dr. Silver, the officials, filing away. And there, of course, is JoJo White, who had an incredible series for the Boston Celtics. Played 60 minutes on Friday night, came back, and don't forget, we'll be going inside the victorious locker room. Andy Rudolph will be in there. We'll find out who our MVP is. This is my first time around, Tom, but I'm happy to be here to make this presentation for the world champion once again. This trophy goes back to 1913, Red. It's a marvelous one. You've been on there before. You're world champions again, and the NBA is proud of you, and the whole country is proud of you. John, Tom, Red. All right, Tommy, let me hear you say it. Let me hear you say it. Well, you can't throw me out of the bar now, Mindy. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to... And, and, and all the other stuff, I think it was a, uh, a great series against a real fine competitive Phoenix ball club that uh, is going to have to be reckoned with in the future. Uh, they're spunky. They came at us. I think our guys were tremendously spunky. We're not the youngest of ball clubs. And we came at them, and, and the way to beat this team was to run. And guys like Havlicek with injuries were really pushing up the floor, and I think that's just tremendous. Okay. It'll be Gross and McGinnis. 109-107. Philadelphia needing a break off the tap. It goes to free. They can tie it. Philadelphia can tie it. Fernandez the doctor outside. Off iron. Free with the rebound. Seven. Gross is over there on him. Goes back now. You've got the signal to Philadelphia. The ball went out of bounds in five seconds. 109-107. Philadelphia with possession. They had their chances that time. Maurice Lucas, I don't know where he's playing right now. If they take the ball in bounds, George McGinnis is wide open. I don't know what he's doing. Here's McGinnis. Lucas comes out. McGinnis for the tie. It's off. Oh, he's it's over. It's over. Portland has the championship. 109 to 107. They've gone wild. Their first year in the NBA playoffs. The baskets are down. The one on my left, Walton has had the jersey stripped off him. Walton and the Trailblazers trying to battle through the crowd in the locker room. A world championship for the Blazers. But the 76ers came right down to the end and would not quit against them. And so for Steve Jones and Rick Barry, this is Brent Musburger saying so long from Portland, Oregon, where they've gone win the championship. The NBA on CBS is a presentation of CBS Sports. It's been a whale of a campaign, and the tide looks now starting to show on even the fans' faces. It began eight months ago. Dennis Johnson begins the countdown. They must shoot quickly. It is in and out. Unsell with control. It is about to end. Bobby Dandridge, he will be our most valuable player. Bobby Dandridge voted to CBS most valuable player here in the NBA Championship Series, and the celebration can begin in Washington. Dick Mata and Bernie Bickerstaff are embracing over there as the Washington Bullets jubilantly file off the floor, and the crowd here in Seattle, rather than booing, comes to its feet and gives both these teams a tremendous ovation. 
Freddie Brown and Wes Unseld shaking hands at midcourt. There are no recriminations for Lenny Wilkins and the Supersonics. They didn't even think this team would get in the playoffs. And for the Washington Bullets, they have finally done it, and they've done it the hard way. They twice had to win games here in Seattle, one in the Kingdom before 39,000 fans, and then here tonight in the Seattle Center Coliseum where the Supersonics had won 22 straight games. And it was the Washington Bullets prevailing 105 to 99, the final score, as they file into their locker room. The happy champions of the NBA, Larry Wright, and Kevin Gravy, the most valuable player, Bobby Damage, Charles Johnson there embracing, Greg Ballard, the rookie from Oregon, who provided some great moments for the Bullets as they eliminated Atlanta. Then they were underdogs against the San Antonio Spurs. They voted the MVP on CBS. Gervin. And then, after shutting down George Gervin in San Antonio, these men went up against the doctor. Julius Irving in the Philadelphia 76ers. They beat them in six games. Then it was on to the championship, and again, they had given up the home court. But they rested it away tonight, as they have won the, the second, NBA second championship. Time for you, though. Yeah, yeah, baby! Hey, what a marvelous feeling this is. Sorry? 15 years I waited. Well, I won't have you wait another second, Abe. If I can lift this and present it to you. Watch your back. Here Watch is your the, back. Here's okay. the World Championship trophy Thanks. to the Washington Bullets, the champions of the world. And so, Abe Poland accepting the trophy for having won the championship. And Dick Mata, I know what a moment this is for you. It's a, been a long time, but it was worth it. Uh, uh, first, uh, Seattle played a great series. I, I thought it was a, a heck of a basketball series. I enjoyed every minute of it. Walked out on the court tonight, and I hated to see it end with the seven games. And I think the fat lady's going to sing in Washington, D.C. from now on. <laughs> hey! <laughs> All right, Dick Mata and the Washington Bullets now have accepted the trophy. They have won the world championship, and we're going to be back in Seattle. But first, we're going to break away for this timeout. And if Seattle can do it, they will become only the second team in the last 20 years to win the title after losing in the final round the previous year. Since 1960, only the 1973 New York Knicks were able to rebound from a final round loss to win the championship the following season. 12 seconds, all now that separates Seattle from its goal. Gus Williams and John Johnson smiling as they come out of that huddle. The crowd, 19,000, still here in the Capitol Center, still urging the bullets on. All right, they'll have Unsell take it out. They'll probably try to lob it down low. If not, then the guards will scissor off Kinnear and Wright and probably get a jump shot out front. But the important thing for Seattle is do not commit a foul here, especially in the active shooting. You've got the lead. You've got the time. 12 seconds. Here we go. Unsell to inbound. Start the countdown. Ballard. Off with the shot, Sonics control from the corner. I don't even have to come in. Front. Five, four, three, two, one. Let the celebration begin in Seattle. It is over. The Seattle Supersonics have won the NBA World Championship Series in five games, beating the Washington Bullets 97-93. But listen to the crowd in Landover. Listen to this display of sportsmanship. They're actually applauding everyone. Not a boo in this. Really applauding the play of both Seattle and the Bullets. You got to appreciate that Seattle play. They deserved it. They played great basketball. <laughs> the opera has come to an end. The fat lady came down with laryngitis on a Friday night. She was struggling hard. I believe she's fickle. A very fickle fat lady. <laughs> Inside that jubilant locker room, we'll be going in there, of course, to talk to the players. We will also make the announcement right now that that car is going to go to Dennis Johnson. He's been voted the most valuable player here the Seattle Supersonics have won the NBA World Championship and we'll be right back in Landover, Maryland.